in the microbiome realm, the questions are basically, they're really different in many ways. So you've gone out typically, the way that I'm thinking of this anyway, is you've gone out and surveyed some um, uh, environment, some environmental niche for uh, presence of bacterial taxa, like the gut or the, um, the oral cavity. Um, the classic uh, study that I liked was one that looked at uh, students entering an exam and uh, took samples from their left hand and their right hand. And, uh, and then um, what you do is you isolate the DNA from the sample. And um, t typically, in the, in the past anyway, you'd amplify a particular um, phylogenetically conserved region and um, take the sequence from that region and align it, look for, uh, align it to samples in a reference database and find the best alignment and say that sequence represents an instance of whatever taxon that is. And so you get a list of taxa that are present on the left hand and on the left hand and on the right hand and, um, and ask questions about that or in a more um, biological context asking about differences in say uh, gut microbiome content in patients before and after transplant or um, or similar activities. And um, so the goal here is uh, um, a pop it's a population level survey and you've got sort of moderate numbers of samples like tens or hundreds of individuals. The wet lab and sequencing is quite different. You're often targeting phylogenetically informative genes and you require sort of longer um, reads that you can use to distinguish different taxonomic groups. And historically, actually, people used 454 technology, which would generate these longer reads um, and that had different sort of statistical properties. 454 reads tended to have homopolymers in instead of uh, single nucleotide base calling errors. But more recently, with paired end sequencing and the longer uh, amounts of reads that you can get from a paired end sequence and just the volume of reads, you can go for um, paired end reads that, have, that are relatively long and as I said before, you basically sequence the whole fragment and uh, have some overlap. And you use that entire sequence of phylogenetically inform informative regions or of the whole, whole genome to look for matches in these reference databases. Now what, what reference databases do you use to uh, um, There are a couple that are used uh, in, um, in, in the field. So there's... Uh, there's this Green Genes Project and RDP, which is a, a database of, of sequences. And there's also an approach that's been, uh, some more typos here, geez. Um, there's also an approach that's been developed <coughs> here called P-Placer. And uh, P-Placer uses a set of sort of basically hand-curated reference genomes. So you're looking at uh, the gut microbiome, and the P-Placer people have uh, curated um, from NCBI and other sources the organisms that are relevant to um, to the, mi the gut microbiome and a, st a standard reference. Yeah. So what's the reduction stage here? The reduction stage is that you have to do some pre-processing, typically, for instance, knitting together these overlapping paired end reads, um, and then you take those reads and you align, you match each one to this reference database. Or, in the case of P-Placer, try and place the read within the context of the phylogeny that you're working with and find the, the, the location of the read in the phylogeny and use that as a way of classifying to some taxonomic scale um, the, the organism that you've sampled by that read. And so what you do is each read represents a vote for a, the presence of a particular taxonomic group. And funnily enough, at the end of the day, you end up with the reduction stage, even though it's sort of completely different and the questions are completely different. You end up at the reduction stage with a count table that's very reminiscent of RNA-seq, where in the columns you have these samples, and in the rows you have taxonomic assignments instead of um, genes. Um, but it's basically a count table. And the counts actually have similar, similar properties. Well, there are fewer, fewer taxonomic <coughs> groups, sort of hundreds of taxonomic groups instead of tens of thousands of genes. But there are lots of zeros, so there's this zero inflated kind of model that's, that's, that um, we've seen already. Um, 
way that one anal analy analyzes this data, probably there are some important lessons learned from the microarray era and from the RNA-seq um, approaches that are as relevant to microbiome data as they are to the RNA-seq data, like the way that you do normalization of counts across uh, samples. Um, so you'd actually think, and it's, it's probably true, um, that the sort of insights from microarrays and RNA-seq actually apply as well to the microbiome world. But um, in terms of this pre-processing and formation of this count table, that's mostly done outside of R, although a recent package uh, is called R-RDP, which uh, is an R bioconductor interface to the RDP classifier, which is one of the common ways in which um, these reads are classified to, to taxonomic groups. So you could do your classification within R. And then once you end up with um, this counts table, um, sort of the biological context, like the way that you comprehend uh, the data, is um, it's, it's basically a, an exercise in ecology where uh, you have these ecological communities with ta taxonomic representation, and you're asking about, and each, each, um, each sample represents a different community, and you're basically asking ecological questions like, are, um, are the communities in these samples different from the communities in, in a second set of samples? It's basically an ecological question, and there's sort of phylogenetic questions as well about you know, the phylogenetic relationships of the taxa. And it turns out that uh, Bioconductor has been doing its sort of molecular biology thing for a dozen years. And then off in the R world, there are these um, pretty vibrant communities of ecologists and evolutionary biologists who have been developing their own packages with great names, like APE is the phylogenetic uh, package, um, and um, ADE is, a, is one of the ecological um, packages. And so it turns out that... Um, the analyses that you'd like to do, the ecological analyses coupled with the sort of lessons from microarrays, means that R and Bioconductor are actually quite effective as analysis tools for, um, for microbiome data. And there's a, there aren't a large number of packages in Bioconductor that um, are relevant to the microbiome, but one particularly useful package is, is called PhiloSeq, um, which comes in at this analysis stage. That's my quick overview of these um, common sequence analysis workflows. Um, I hope it gives you a flavor of the diversity of types of data and the way that Bioconductor fits into the, 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 the overall workflow, particularly towards the, um, after the, or during or after the reduction stage to, um, in the analysis and um, comprehension of the data as opposed to the, the sort of dealing with the, the big data. Program.